coming up on Access episode 56. Need for Speed Most Wanted is our game of the week. Lego Lord of the Rings stars in our PlayStation briefing. There's all the latest from the new look PlayStation store. Plus, we've got coverage of the Golden Joystick Awards. We visit Criterion at their studio in Guildford and sign out with a cute Easter egg from the unfinished swan. What kind of numpty doesn't love cars? You've got your sleek and sexy sports cars. You could even get tiny little toy cars like this one here. But being a West Country lad, born and bred, there's a certain type of vehicle that is my personal favourite. Now that is what I'm talking about. Unbelievably, there aren't actually any tractors in Need for Speed Most Wanted, a fact I was apoplectic with rage about until I actually played the game and discovered it was the best thing with cars in it since Brum was on TV. Of course it's brilliant, it's made by Criterion for goodness sake, a studio about as likely to make a duff racer as I am of breaking the land speed record on a push bike. You still need another 740. 740 miles an hour. The first reason it's brilliant are all the cars. There are loads of them. And here's the best bit. You don't need to poodle around in a Skoda for 20 hours to unlock them all. Each model is hidden throughout the sprawling automotive paradise that is Fairhaven City. And all you have to do to get behind the wheel is find them. It's like Criterion No were all a bunch of squalling YouTube generation babies and just gave us the entire sweet shot right from the beginning to shut us up. If there is a downside to all that irresistible engine booty, it's that sticking with one long enough to unlock all its perks – nitro, harder body armour, better tyres – is tough like being chucked in a room full of robot supermodels from the future and being told to pick just one. Yes, yes. Oh, actually. Oh. <laughs> I don't know what to do with my life anymore. And it's not just the cars with which Criterion have spoiled us rotten. Fairhaven is positively rammed with stuff to do. Street races, cop chases, speed camera drive-bys, billboard smashes, secret pathfinding. It's all there right from the off with the all-seeing Autolog system keeping track of everything you do and comparing it with your mates. The best thing Autolog does is plastering in-game billboards with smug, boasty pictures of your friends for you to drive through, with your face going up instead if you can bet their efforts, which you can see right now in this authentic recreation. Eat it, Dave. Eat my distance. And then there are the most wanted events themselves, best described as mega-fast boss battles where you chase down the ten most badass drivers in Fairhaven before nicking their ride. Most Wanted is on PlayStation Vita as well, and lets you transfer all your points and unlock so you can continue on the go. Both versions are huge, deliriously fast, out on November the 2nd, and are basically essential for anyone who likes stuff that is completely awesome. And just for the record, I actually quite like Skodas. Spraying fresh new scent over the stink of ignorance now, it's your PlayStation Briefing. We begin in the land of Middle-earth, which, if we're honest, is looking a bit blockier than we remember it. But that's because it's all made of Lego. Yes, it's the one you've all been bawling on forums for, Lego The Lord of the Rings. And we spoke to the One Ring, Telltale Games' Philip Ring, and asked him if they'd put in a really funny Legolas joke. There's some um, Lego-based humour, shall we say, in there. And that's what the Lego Lord of the Rings is about, making sure that we bring the Lego humour and kind of like looking through a Lego lens at this world. But it is still very much a, a Lord of the Rings experience and we want to keep true to that side of things. I can't believe his name's Philip Ring. <laughs> Also on our radar this week is Fuse, the new shooter from Insomniac that used to be called Overstrike but has ditched the cartoony vibe and stuck in loads of outrageous guns. We had a chat with the developers to learn more. I'd say Ted Price is probably the most insane we weapons guy we have. Uh, I have a, I have a part certainly in designing the guns but there are a ton of people who contribute and I think that we all share a passion for really satisfying weaponry in our games. It's been something that's part of our DNA since we started at Insomniac. That's your briefing done for now. We'll have more news for you next week. Time 
time for some fat with a PH download now. It's your roundup from On The Store. If you had a time machine, where would you go? We bet to when Killzone first came out in 2004 would be pretty high on that list, in which case we've got some excellent news. The original PS2 shooter is now available as a full-on digital title on the PlayStation Store. Download it and look back through the eyes of PlayStation history at the game that spawned one of this generation's most iconic series. Speaking of iconic, PlayStation Vita owners have got it sweet this week with the release of Street Fighter Cross Tekken on the handheld. It looks bloody gorgeous, has an endless roster of fighters and means you can make Ryu and Kazuya have a big sweaty man tussle anywhere you want. Also on PS Vita this week is Super Monkey Ball Banana Splits, with a Z because it's so gangster, a crackers platforming adventure that makes excellent use of the Vita's tilt functions as well as letting you create your own play areas. It's available for download right now and is the best game about a monkey trapped in a transparent plastic sphere we've ever played. Just don't tell Peter. That's your lot from the store this week. We'll have more downloadables for you next time. Glitz! Glamour! Good looking people! It can only be the 30th annual Golden Joystick Awards from London, celebrating the very best in video games over the past year. Naturally, we were there rubbing shoulders with the industry elite and chatting to the winners about their illustrious gaming gongs. We've just won uh, the Outstanding Achievement Award for FIFA. Players in the UK love it and they come back for more year after year after year. They're only going to do that if it's a great game and it's a real privilege to receive. I'm taking it home and keeping it, it's mine. And this is what we've won, which is the best handheld game of the year. It's terrific, yeah, no, I'm really, really pleased because obviously it's a terrific game and probably send it to Naughty Dog because I'm sure the guys there would really, really appreciate it the most. I think they deserve it. It's amazing. Um, to win these awards means so much because they're voted for by the gamers. There's nothing better than that. We're delighted to win. We really appreciate all the support from the fans out there, which is fantastic. Thank you. I'm a big fan of Skyrim. That's that's the one. That's that's the one I I have been playing actually. Is is, is that one? But do you know what? Not enough because it won Moment of the Year and I don't recognise it. That's an aspect of the game I haven't even explored yet. Thanks to everyone at the ceremony and congratulations to all the winners. This week on Access, we are all about Need for Speed Most Wanted. So not only did we play its little wheels off for Game of the Week, but we also visited developer Criterion during a special community event. That means having spent a little more time defrocking Lamborghini Gallardos, we put your Twitter source questions to the game's executive producer, Matt Webster. Firstly, Paul Hibbs asked if Most Wanted controls like Burnout Paradise, Hot Pursuit or completely different to both. We want players to be able to drive the, car, drive the cars the way they think they can drive the cars. People think that that means that there's not a deep simulation going on underneath. And that's not the case. There is a very, very sophisticated simulation that goes underneath. We then sort of layer the magic on top. Um, and then where you'll begin to see the similarities is in how the cars corner. And Chris Boas asked, is the Vita version equal to the console version? What are the differences? Uh, we're really pleased with the Vita version. It, it's, uh, we set out to make as close to the, you know, the, the full uh, HD consoles and experience as we possibly could and uh, that's pretty much what we've ended up with. We've had to make a few compromises but apart from density of traffic and number of players that you can play online, the experience is exactly the same. After that we ploughed back into a multiplayer session which was amazing but don't take our word for it, listen to these trustworthy chaps. I uh, really, really liked it. I was a big fan of the original Need for Speed and uh, the fact that they're redoing it with this brand new 2012 edition of Need for Speed Most Wanted is awesome. Really like the whole experience. You can switch between cars nice and quickly. Uh, the range of cars they've got in there is huge. Lots of customizable options as well. So really, really enjoying it. Uh, well, I've just been playing against uh, a friend and we've just been going at each other for the billboard score, the furthest you can go off a ramp. And uh, that's just what I found most fun about Need for Speed so far. And there you have it, the undeniable truth. Need for Speed Most Wanted is amazing and out on Friday the 2nd of November. That's almost it for another week, but before we go, we'll leave you with this brilliant Easter egg found in Artful Geometry Puzzler, The Unfinished Swan. 
In the latter stages of the game, you'll come across this telescope. Simply have a peek, zoom right in, and ta-da! The telescope is so powerful, it can see into other games. In this case, Journey, that other brilliantly arty PSN game. We recommend you play both, otherwise your life will be poorer. See you next week! That's all for Access this week. Hit the giant red button to subscribe to all our regular episodes and extra features. And if you enjoyed this week's show, don't forget to comment and like us. Like us! <laughs>